Good morning. I want you guys to check and see if you can feel your pulse. (laughs) It's just one of those mornings where we need to check and make sure we we can feel our pulse. It is so good to be with you. Whether you're tuning in on social media or you're here in person, we are so glad to have you with us on this morning. We want to welcome you to United Church of Hyde Park. Here at United, we love to celebrate birthdays, and there are some wonderful people born in January, as well as February through December. But we are in January, and we've been celebrating birthdays, and we have one more on the end. Um, Our special finance person, Stephanie U, will be celebrating her birthday tomorrow, Monday. Happy, happy birthday. Do something special. Um, There are a couple other announcements. Today is uh, the first day of the lunar year, so happy lunar year for those of you that celebrate that. Um, For our siblings that are celebrating it, happy lunar new year. Also, if you like Perry Perry across the street and you have an empty bottle of sauce, you can take it in today and get free chicken. So if you got one of those bottles in there, today is the day to get some free chicken. So that's what's going on in our part of the world. We have a few more announcements. Want to let you guys know February the 5th will be our annual meeting. So put that on your calendar. February the 5th is our annual meeting right after service. A reminder again, Jade's new book, Music Notes, Tales from an American Singer, won the best book in the category of short stories at the Pinnacle Book Achievement Award. Congratulations to Jade, just getting those awards. As well, we've been trying to get people to do the fundraising template letter, and it sounds like a good idea, but I know that we're going to be mentioning this a lot. If you need help, uh, Sunita is available to help people technology-wise, but we also are making sure we keep letters on the back table. So think of people in your community. Think of friends you could send out this template to so that we could raise money to help get the daycare open and to take care of our building. We need every member on board sending out these letters. So just a reminder. As always, January and February's upper room is on the back table of the sanctuary, or you can get it from the church office during the weekdays. These are your announcements. Oh, one other announcement, Barbara Taylor. There will be a memorial service for Barbara Taylor, February the 4th at 2 p.m. at the, at the AKA RMA Center, 6220 Ingleside, in Chicago, Illinois. So if you can make that, um, Barbara was a faithful member up until you know she wasn't able to come as often. Um, her daughter and son are doing a memorial service and it would be nice for some of us to show up. These are your, almost all of your announcements. We have two more special announcements. Um, I'm inviting Ann Audrain to come forward today to share about a group in our church called Contemporary Issues. They read different books and have some conversations, um, but let me shut up so she can explain to you what's happening in this group. Our church has a book discussion group. We meet every other week on Thursdays at 11 o'clock on Zoom. Our next meeting will be February 2nd. Like all discussion groups, we talk about books that we read, but this group has a special focus. We talk about our faith, how our faith impacts us, the issues that are going on around us and how to respond to them as people of faith, how to be a Christian in this world. We read both fiction and nonfiction, secular and church-related. We read a novel by Sarah Pretzky. We read the one book, One Chicago, Bedrock Faith. We read a history book, Chicago, the City of Neighborhoods. And we read a book on church leadership, Foretaste, by Paul Dietrich. Currently, we are beginning, on February 2nd, Michelle Obama's new book, The Light We Carry. Each book brings in different perspectives, and we have some pretty lively discussion. But you have to remember, it's always about our church, our lives, and our faith. 
So I hope anyone who'd like to join is most welcome. It's in the newsletter that comes out on Thursday, the Zoom information. Just join us anytime, see what it's like. There are about eight of us, and we welcome anyone. Amen. The nice thing is you can stay at home, you can stay warm, and check into this group. We also, um, every fifth Sunday, I don't know if you guys remember in October, we did stories and songs, but we're doing innovative worship. So we're doing some different things. We want to pique your imagination. And so we did stories and song in October. We have a fifth Sunday coming up uh, next Sunday, and Jade Mays will share more about what we're going to be doing on fifth Sunday. Hello. So this coming Sunday, we're going to do a Taze style service. Uh, these services were started post-war. Let me read exactly. <laughs> Um, to blend contemplative prayer and music with concerns for social justice. Um, and it was really, and diversity is really encouraged. Uh, the, it's very popular with college students here, and then it's kind of spread throughout the communities. Um, people read, it's a combination of music, there's silence, silent prayer in between each transition, and then scriptures are read. And if people come from different countries, and uh, we're like, like you can speak in your own language um, so we can just hear the diversity, not just talk about it. And also we pass the light, uh, literally with candles, and here we'll probably just uh, blow them out at the end of the service instead of walking up. And we, we pray on the, on the Christ candle, then you leave in silence. So next week we're gonna really encourage everybody to come up to the front so we can pass the light easily. <laughs> And uh, just try this and see what you think of this meditative kind of calming service.
Amen. <clears throat> Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Come out of the shadows and into God's light. We will, we will not, not play, play hide, hide and seek, but, but will make a pilgrimage to God's heart. Lay down all which is a burden to you. We will give our fears to God, who is our help in every moment. Follow the one who will lead you to new life. We long to live in God's presence every day of our lives. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing, See the Morning Sun Ascending, in hymnal number page 674. 674. to be in the house of the Lord one more time. This is the part in the service where we get to move out of our seats and share just a little bit of peace with one another. In these post-COVID times, you can speak to one another, but we've also taught you how to say the peace of Christ in sign language. If you're feeling more comfortable and you want a little bit of distance and someone walks up on you, get that sign language up. Peace of Christ be with you. Christ is our peace. Christ has reconciled us to God. We meet in Jesus' name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's go share peace with one another.
The gospel this morning, the gospel lesson is from Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 through 23. The reading can be found on page 785 of your pew Bibles. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which is by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness, have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to use for a sermonic theme today, making a withdrawal, making a withdrawal. Brian's fiance, fiance was given a 400 vanilla prepaid visa gift card for Christmas. Have any of you ever been given one of those gift cards? Get a little excited about them too, don't you? <laughs> what you gonna do, how you gonna spend your money? Well, Brian's fiance was excited about her gift card. It was $400. They checked the card out to see the amount on it. You know, you call that phone number and they were informed that they had $400 on this gift card. So Brian's fiance decided, hey, let's do some grocery shopping. It's one thing to go to the grocery store with $100. It's quite another to go to the grocery store with 400. So, you know, they were dropping stuff in, they were splurging, they were getting excited. They were happy that they had this gift card to pay for their grocery bill. They get all the way up to the cash reg register and kabam, they pull out their vanilla Visa gift card. You already know this story doesn't end well, don't you? When they went to use the gift card, they were told the card was depleted and that they had a whole balance of $3. Brian was shocked, but more than shocked, they were embarrassed. You know, you got a line behind you, your basket's looking good, and you got your cart filled, and now you don't have the money to pay for all the food you put in the cart. Brian couldn't figure out what had happened. His family had used these gift cards for years with no problem at all as gifts to one another. They returned home, sadly, without the groceries to put the missing pieces of the puzzle together. Why didn't this card work? They went and looked in on 
the information, and at 4.45 a.m., someone through a cash app had withdrawn $148. One minute later, someone withdrew $249. Now, before I move forward, I pray none of you listening to me will be tempted to do what I'm about to share with you today. Security experts say there's a new trick that scammers use, that they go into a store, they pull off several cards off the rack, they flick them over, they take out their camera, take a picture of the cards, and then they put the cards back on the rack. And so, periodically, they test out to see if someone's bought the card, right? And there's some money on the card. And at 4.45, Brian and his fiance got most of their money, except for $3, taken. Vanilla gift card refused to comment. Imagine that you don't have the resources you thought you had. Imagine getting all the way to the grocery store in the line at the register and pulling out your Christmas card to discover not only do you not have what you thought you had, but all you got is $3 to pay for the groceries in your cart. Imagine some impatient person behind you rolling their eyes. That would be one of us. Imagine pulling out another card and having it also get declined. Imagine going to the store and discovering you do not have the funds to buy what you came for. Imagine not having enough financial resources to handle your business. Imagine not having the resources to address some of your basic needs. Imagine not having more than enough. For some, they don't have to imagine. Words I've heard a lot since the pandemic are stress, overwhelmed, exhausted, depressed, confused, sick, worried. I hear these words with more and more frequency. All of these words are indicators that funds are being withdrawn from our well-being account. Honestly, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and all of the above, maybe some of us don't have the funds to cover the purchase either. Don't have the wherewithal to deal with what is coming our way. <clears throat> don't have the answers to address what plagues the soul. Don't have the funds to cope with life. Ever wake up and feel like you just want to sleep this day off? Just want this one to pass you on by. Sometimes by the time we realize that we don't have enough funds, we're already broke. We're already at the cash register thinking we got something we don't. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Jesus didn't have enough in his account either. And an odd thing happens when he hears of John's distress. He withdraws. Now, you might have expected Jesus to show up because that's what Jesus does. Jesus shows up. Or maybe you expected him to say a prayer. Or at least Jesus could have sent someone, even though this was still relatively early in his ministry. He could have performed a miracle. People will always have an expectation of you and for you, what you should do and how you should be and how you should handle the situation and what you could have done while sitting on the sideline. But on this day, Jesus sort of leaves us hanging. This text says he withdrew. He didn't go to the ATM. He simply took himself and went somewhere else. Scholars will say John's arrest was dangerous for Jesus, and Jesus discerns it's best for him to move to a different location. Withdrawals were really being made on his life. His task and his road and his path were not easy peasy at all. As we learned on last week, once the word got out, show and tell time was on and folks were on his path, people were curious, wanted to see, wanted to hear, wanted miracles, wanted signs. He learned that John was being harassed. You know what Jesus did? He withdrew. There was this lady, let's call her Lady D. She was a teacher by profession, but more than being a teacher, she loved being a mom. And then one day she discovered something even more beautiful than being a mom, being a grandma. This was priceless. She loved having her grandbabies come to visit and feeding them stuff she wouldn't have dreamed of feeding her own kids. And the best part is, you know what that best part is, she got to send them home. Her family and friends and church were her life. She could dole out love like it was nobody's business. But she also had this other day, she called it her 
go to hell day. She was the proud owner of lots of fashionably styled pajamas. And on this particular day, she put them on and declared it was a day where she was planning on doing absolutely nothing. Her family understood these days and they left her alone. I imagine Jesus withdrawal similarly. I love you all, but right now, right now, I gotta go. The teacher shot by the six-year-old is gonna be okay, but wow, withdrawal. Google lays off, Google lays off 20,000 workers this past week. Withdrawal. A lady approached by a carjacker begins to scream and holler, caught on video by someone's ring bell. Her acting could have won an Oscar, except for it wasn't acting. The carjacker flees the scene, withdrawal. 11 candidates for the fifth ward, withdrawal. Republican congressman in a web of lies. I didn't say I was Jewish. I said I was Jew-ish. It wasn't that he lied, because lying is nothing new. It was to the extent that he lied and won Withdrawal, everything in life is going up except for wages. Somebody ought to say amen. Withdrawal, there are so many issues to fight for. Sometimes you have to withdraw from your own space for your own well-being, but not forever. People are on 10 these days. You don't know if you're walking next to a time bomb or not. Withdrawal, your loved one or someone close proximity to you is on psycho. Withdrawal. Lady announces she wants a divorce. Her husband kills everyone in the house. Seven people dead. Withdrawal. Some of you, us, need time off the grill. The grill. Time off the grid. Disconnect, really. But you'll be back. It's too much, too, too much happening in our world, happening in our community, happening in our families, happening in our life. Jesus made a qualitative decision on behalf of himself. He withdrew. Scholars will argue he wasn't near the danger, but he still withdrew. He knew what he needed for himself, and you don't have to be in the physical proximity of danger to be impacted by danger. Sometimes we have to put on our PJs and let folks know the shop is closed for today. You all are going to have to figure it out for yourselves, and you are going to have to do you to the bones. In the words of Kenny G, you got to know when to what? Hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. In withdrawal mode, you got to know when to walk away. You got to know when to withdraw. This climate isn't good to you or for you. Withdrawal. Others shouldn't be the only one making withdrawals on your life. Sometimes, as a self care act, you need to withdraw yourself. The Negro spiritual, deeply sorrowful mentions steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus. Steal away, steal away home. I ain't got long to stay here. On the surface, this song is talking about going home to Jesus, but if you'll just peel back the layers, the psalmist is talking about time and space alone, a moment away from the glare and heaviness of slavery, a moment away from the heaviness of living, a moment where one can inhale and exhale, a moment to withdraw as an act of self-care, especially for those who are severely marginalized in this world. Just as Jesus withdrew, so can we steal away. Nobody will tell it to you. Nobody will give it to you. They'll look at you. They'll say you look tired. They'll say you look (laughs) knocked up. But they won't give it to you by withdrawing. Jesus is not withdrawing from his purpose and his calling. He's not deciding in a moment of conflict. He's taking his marbles and he ain't coming back. He's leaving for good. He's taking the necessary time to rest and breathe and pray and refuel. He doesn't stay gone forever. And when he returns, it's back to business. But he does withdraw. And by withdrawing, I think he models for us a way of living our life. We can't always be on. We can't always be there for others. We can't always answer our phone. We can't always be following Christ. Sometimes we have to put the closed sign on the door so when people roll up, they know we are not open today. 
the love and compassion you so freely give to others as followers of Christ, share a little of that with you. And you don't have to bank, break the bank to do so. Schedule a day for you. Schedule a day with you. Plan what are you going to do so when the time comes, you don't have to stand yourself up. Say a little prayer for yourself. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Donate to your own GoFundMe self-care page. Think about what you want to do on that time when you withdraw. What would be beneficial for you to make it through this year, 2023? And remember, withdrawing helps you to show up for others better. When you take time for yourself, it makes you a happier person and your joy is contagious. Put yourself on your schedule. And if you already do this well, and there are a few of you that are A-plus in this course, try to help somebody else do it for themselves. One worker was going through a difficult time and his coworkers noticed, but nobody tried to help him do better. So the message for today is to do you without apology or guilt. We always talk about doing others, but today's message is a reminder that we all need balance. Nothing is bad out of moderation, but we are called to withdraw, period. Because maybe, maybe you are or you aren't the lady showing up at the grocery store without sufficient funds. What she thought she had, she didn't. Maybe you are or you aren't showing up for others when you are barely, barely making it yourself. Maybe you are or you aren't the person who everyone turns to but has very few people you can depend on yourself. Maybe the depth of your struggles are not fully known to those around you. Maybe you are or you aren't wondering if you have enough to get by on this week. You are worth the time and energy Take time to rest and renew. Take time off. Take time to wear your nice PJs. Take time to do absolutely nothing and be thrilled about it. Take retreat. Take vacations. Take solitude. Take silence. Don't answer the phone sometimes. And you, make you your goal this year. Make that withdrawal, because guess what? Others will. Others will. Others will. It's okay sometimes to withdraw. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, the seesaw teaches us about the balance of life. Too much weight on one side throws us out of balance. Too much weight on the other side throws us out of balance. But it is the balance. It's the balance of being a follower of Christ. It's the balance of doing and going in the world. But it's the balance of also loving ourselves. Your great commandment said to love others as we love ourselves. So help us, Lord. Help us to take the time we need for ourselves. Help us not to be so weary in well-doing that we neglect ourselves. Help us to put ourselves on the calendar. Help us to know when the gas tank is low. Help us to see and know that we are worthy, worthy, worthy to withdraw. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. <clears throat> it is offering time and we invite you to share and support a space that really lifts up your values. There are a lot of churches in Chicago that are harmful and exclusive and that's not who we are here at United Church of Hyde Park. We're trying to live out a way that everyone is included. Um, and that people can come just as they are. We're trying to be a church of intentionality around open space. We just appreciate people bringing their hearts, and we focus on the inner versus the outer. This is a beautiful space of openness and inclusivity, inclusivity and welcoming. And so I invite you to support this space because we need your support. <clears throat> You know, Apple can charge a whole lot of money for its products because people are willing to buy it. And concerts, oh my goodness, a Beyonce car concert can cost a whole lot of money because what? Somebody's willing to buy the ticket. And you know what they say about the church? The $1 bills are the only ones circulating around. <laughs> so I encourage us to really think about where our values are, what our values are, and if we value this place, to really dig deep and let us share our financial resources so we can continue to be a church that has a different message on our marquee and a different message that we send out to people. This is offering time. Be a generous, cheerful giver. I'm going to invite those to come forward that uh, take the plates around at this time.
Dear Lord, we thank you for that beautiful reminder that you are taking care of us. We lift up our seeds of faith at this time and we lean into the awareness that not only will you take care of us, but you will take care of others and you will take care of our community and you will take care of our world. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can remember when you were in school and class and when the teacher asked a question, there were certain kids that always raised their hand, right? They shoot them up in the air and sometimes the teacher would even try to ignore some of those kids. And then there were kids that never raised their hands. Sometimes when we do community check-in and we're trying to figure out how we're doing and trying to figure out how you all are doing, some folks are so faithful and we love that. You share, you let us know how you're doing, some every Sunday. And some of you we never hear anything from. This is our time together. And so we really want to know how, how you're doing. Know something about you. So today as I invite you to share what's happening in your world, if you need prayer to lift that up, if you have something you're excited about to share that, I'm particularly talking to the people I haven't heard from in a year. And, and the people raising their hand. <laughs> Joe? Well, I'm just grateful for everybody that showed up today in kind of a dreary, horrible day. Our opening hymn was worship as the sun ascends, and it did somewhere, but maybe not here so much that we can't see. So I wanted to express my gratitude for people that showed up, and especially these two lovely people on the front row that made a special, special effort, and I do appreciate you being here. Good to have you, Arlene and Diane, on the front row. Right up here, they want to hear, so they said they would sit close. And good to have all of you. I see a couple of visitors today, and it's good to have some new visitors and new faces in the place. So good to have all of you here today. Come Holy Spirit, hear our prayers and hear our joy as well. First of all, I reached my, uh, I have, now I have, I have 224 medals so far. I ain't doing that. The goal is to reach, I'm now trying to reach a, a new marathon. I'm trying to get close to, four, I'm trying to get close to 400. Well, now I have, I have Bowen come up, I have Bowen, running, South Hall come up, and I also have four men, I have four men come up in May. I'm trying to reach, I said now I'm trying to get close to, close to 500 medals. From the first time he be done, I came in first place in basketball. I'm proud. Now the goal is to get close to 550 medals in running, softball, bowling, and everything I trying to do. Kobe Bryant taught me to be a champion. When, I was, when Kobe Bryant was here, he taught me to be the best. I could be. Now I'm trying to reach another milestone, close to 500, 525 medals. So now, it's, 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 it's like easy being the best person on this planet. It took me a long time to be the best one I am. So now the goal is to get close to 550 medals. Amen for that. <laughs> so the now I'm trying to reach a, a new milestone at 575 medals. I'm trying to get close to 500 medals. So uh, Maurice uh, surpassed his last goal of medals and is now has a new goal for medals. Uh, come Holy Spirit, hear our prayers and hear our joy. Peter. It's about someone we ran into on the sidewalk. We didn't hurt them or the sidewalk, though. It was uh, Marie Eby and her daughter, Jennifer. Jennifer, 
And uh, Maria is now grandmother. She has been for a while. You know, I asked about, oh, because then she, she called just the other day. And yeah. when it's someone you haven't heard from or, you know, it's, well, who died? But uh, no, no one died. And uh, she has another granddaughter. Yes. She had some grandsons who were a little older. And then uh, Jennifer had a three-year-old daughter and another daughter born on December 1st. So things are going well for them. So you ran into them today? No, this was about three weeks ago, I okay. guess. But they, call, they called last then they call. a okay. week ago or so. So ro running into old time folks and then having an extended phone conversation. Thanks for sharing that. June? Oh. Uh, oh was, good morning. Well, it's two oh. June, so they all both spoke. So, you know, this time I'm gonna go with the senior. I'm gonna go old okay. school. So, uh, June Porter is uh, is the elder. <laughs> well, <clears throat> this church is lucky to have two Junes. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. I, I was honored to speak at a Martin Luther King uh, program, and my church supported me. Uh, Josiah and his mom. Valerie Kane and Wei Jin, I think you were there. I was so excited to have them come. Uh, and the other thing is that I got to sit down here and I could hear really well, a lot better than when I sit back there. So what June said is she hears a lot, Arlene's moved up too. So that might, I don't know, maybe next Sunday more of you gonna be sitting down here on the first. <laughs> The first two rows. We also have a new sound system we've been trying out, and I, I hear that's been helping people to hear. Okay, thanks for, um, sh uh, uh, June shared she was on a panel for Martin Luther King, and she got a standing ovation and um, just was grateful for the support of her church. I think I saw a hand somewhere in the, oh yeah, the other, Marsha, don't get me in trouble. The other June, then Marsha. Yes, I would like to say good morning and prayers for Mary Lou, Manning, because her apartment got flooded uh, maybe last month, I think, and she's not sure where she's going to be at going forward, so just a prayer for her, a uh, prayer for my friend America, because her mother is in the last stage of dementia, so they're going through a lot right now, and just to let the church know that Donnell Moore called me this morning, and he fell, trying to get to... Um, I guess Bible study this morning. Hmm. So. so sorry to hear. Um, so she reported on two church members, Mary Lou, of, of flooding um, in her high rise. And um, we should be lifting her up in prayer as well as Donnell falling. Um, so come Holy Spirit. Want to lift up, there is a sister that uh, comes to our church from time to time that uh, June made me aware of called Jerry Richards. And her daughter is, um, has had a battle with cancer and is in hospice. So we want to lift up Carlotta um, and these uh, stages, um, these uh, final steps of her life. Come Holy Spirit. Yes, Marsha. Yes, I finally got my hearing aid mulled back and um, I can hear out of both ears now and it really sounds nice to hear all you guys and hear the music too. So um, I hope it stays that way. <laughs> so Marsha feeling grateful. She could hear the music in service today. Y'all, y'all, okay, amen. Stephanie, come on, oh, Stephanie. Did you find someone else, Steph? Rachel Sir. Rachel's surgery is tomorrow, so let's just keep her in prayer. I had asked Maurice because I had wondered if, she, if it was earlier in the week, but he said it's tomorrow, so let's keep her lifted up. Um, yeah, so Rachel mentioned last week, so definitely some concern around that, so let's keep Rachel lifted up as she goes before surgery. Come Holy Spirit. Wei Jin. Hi, good morning. Um, just as a friendly reminder, we are collecting your interest of, of attending the Shove, Shove, Shove Tuesday. It will be in February 21st 
that day our traditional that day we will have meal together and we will have Ash Wednesday service right after a simple meal. So if you are interested in attending this event, you can talk to the church office or talk to Tracy directly. We can have your name listed. Yeah. And so Tracy's out with Youth Church, but she's in the fellowship hall, so Wei Jin is letting us know if you're interested. She did go around last Sunday, but if you're interested in kind of a Shrove, Shrove Tuesday slash Ash Tuesday uh, service, uh, uh, let uh, let Tracy or the church office know. Thank you, Wei Jin, for lifting that up. Uh, another announcement? Yes. Okay. And today is the first day for the new, new, new year. Then our church always have very good uh, coffee hours in our fellowship hall. And I so was thank you for those ladies' preparation. And today I bring something from Taiwan originally, three different kinds of cake. will be a pancake with seaweed and uh, walnut cake and little prince, one bite noodle, especially for the teenagers. So the original from Taiwan, that when I was a kid, we loved this kind of goodie for the New Year Day. So happy Lunar New Year and happy Taiwan's New Year. So please stay after the coffee hour so we can have a goodie there. Thank you. So we got some Lunar New Year treats, you guys. Not just coffee and tea, so after service today. Thank you. Come Holy Spirit, hear our joy. Anybody else? Okay. Um, let us pray. Dear Lord, I invite your people to pray the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. Okay. Before we close, just a reminder to our disability group, we will be meeting after church. If you guys that are a part of the disability awareness group would just come down to the front after service, that would be great. And um, Georgette and Joe, would you guys come down? We, um, the first Sunday back, we welcomed them in, but we were doing a whole lot of stuff. And after service, I didn't give them a chance to get the right fellowship and have you guys come and welcome them in. So we're going to have them come down today and at the benediction, just to welcome them in, say we're so glad you guys became members, and we also want to take a picture with you. So thank you so much for coming down. These are our newest members. They're smiling, y'all, because we haven't put them to work yet. So see, they're happy right now. <laughs> Now let us rise for our closing hymn, Take Time to Be Holy, and it can be found in your hymnal book number 395.
protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you God's favor and give you God's peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.